Hello everybody, welcome back to another Mega Projects video. This is a Mega Projects video about a cat. <laughs> a cat that the CIA turned into a spy for real. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Safety and security online are critically important and you can protect yourself online with who? Yes, Surfshark. Get 83% off and three months for free. What a deal. Through the description link below. The Cold War saw some wonderfully bizarre forms of espionage from the CIA's Insectothopter, an unmanned aerial vehicle as small as a dragonfly, umbrellas that fired poisonous darts, shoes that contained cameras and lipstick with a 4.5mm gun concealed inside to the wacky attempts by the Americans to read minds, a topic that we've actually recently covered here on Mega Projects called the Stargate Project, which has disappointingly absolutely nothing to do with the Stargate TV show. It's a shame. But if you thought that last one sounded brilliantly outlandish, then you're in for a treat with this video. The CIA's plan to implant listening devices in cats, which would then find their way into Soviet embassies or even the Kremlin via pre-taught acoustic tones given by its handler, was surely slightly over the line which separates the institutionalized and the sane. But it is 100% true. This story is so outrageous, it feels as if it should be part of the Austin Powers movies. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. But it does show the level of ingenuity, or perhaps desperation, depending on how you want to look at it, that the two superpowers reached during the Cold War. <laughs> What more can be said about the surreal, preposterous period between the end of the Second World War and the collapse of the USSR in 1991, known as the Cold War? Well, hopefully a lot more, because it's a source of excellent videos for this channel. It saw a monumental leap forward in terms of military technology, and with this hardware, the Soviet Union and the Americans, along with its allies, went toe-to-toe -to -toe in a global destruction game of cat and mouse. Now, if you're interested in the Cold War, well, we've done numerous videos on it, ranging from specific military hardware to the nuclear arms race and its decline, so do check those out. I feel that every other video on this channel is about the Cold War. But while nuclear weapons, gargantuan submarines, and next generation spy planes might have grabbed most of the headlines, the Cold War was often fought on a more micro level. The two sides were seemingly willing to do whatever it took to gain the slightest upper hand, and while well, this led to some of the more unusual spying and military methods. That previously mentioned Stargate project? Well, the CIA spent 20 years tried to use mind reading to steal Soviet secrets. Holy sh Spoiler alert, they, uh, they they didn't succeed. While the USSR set up the Sura Ionospheric Heating Facility in an attempt to essentially control the weather. It is worth pointing out that the USSR also heavily experimented with mind reading and the Americans also did their best to tinker with the weather. No doubt if either side thought of jumping off a cliff might bring a Cold War victory, you can bet the other would be right behind it. It was that kind of war. <laughs> The idea of using animals in war certainly isn't necessarily outrageous, and it has been done for thousands of years. Let's not forget that humans have ridden horses into battle since around 900 BC, and Carthaginian general Hannibal famously used elephants to smash his way to Rome in 218 BC. Staying with the legendary Hannibal after his defeat to the Romans, he resorted to launching poisonous snakes via catapults at enemy ships. He won that particular battle, by the way. Rats were used to detect mines during the First World War, and in World War II, 100 dead rats were stuffed with explosives by the British who intended to leave them close to German boiler rooms. The hope was that the Germans would just shovel them into the boilers, which would then explode. Unfortunately, the Germans intercepted the first batch, and nothing ever came of the concept, which was brilliantly named Exploding Rat. <laughs> I feel like code names should have been a thing, guys. It's like, I wonder what this project's about. Maybe it's got something to do with bombs in rats. Just maybe. Pigeons have long been used to carry messages, and quite unbelievably, or not so considering the subject of today's video, research was done during World War II to examine pigeon-based homing devices for missiles, but again, nothing ever came of this. Also, in World War II, the US came remarkably close to using bats with small incendiary devices attached to them in what was Project X-Ray. So close, in fact, that Americans managed to set fire to the Cold Bad Army Air Auxiliary Base in New Mexico after the bats roosted under a fuel tank and incinerated the test range. Then we come to man's best friend. Nowadays, dogs are probably the most likely animal to be seen on the battlefield, with one even included in the raids that killed Osama bin Laden. They are used to detect explosives 
explosives, search for survivors after major disasters as an excellent method of intimidation, and also to boost the spirits of the troops. Not really, I made that last one up, but probably. If you've ever had a ferocious German shepherd bearing down on you with a deranged homicidal glare in its eyes, you probably understand why. <laughs> Hopefully you've never been in that situation, dear viewer. I'm going to round out this section now, but believe me, I could go on. But we shouldn't, because isn't this video about cats? <laughs> if you thought the use of cats during the Cold War was, but here we are, <laughs> was bizarre. History is littered with some of the most insane ideas for the use of animals for military purposes. But one animal that never seems to come up was cats. <laughs> When you think about their more fearsome cousins, tigers, lions, panthers, leopards, etc. Does the idea of cats being used in combat sound so ridiculous? Well, yes, because they're very small. It's like tigers. <laughs> oh, shit. Cats. Oh. Now, I know I've just said that the use of cats never seemed to come up, but there was at least one potential attempt to use them around two and a half thousand years ago. You see, the Egyptians rather revered cats, and harming them was firmly against their religious beliefs. With this in mind, during the Battle of Pelusium in 525 BC between the Achaemenid and Egyptian empires, the Achaemenid forces were said to have deployed cats on the battlefield as a psychological weapon. If the legend is accurate, the Achaemenid soldiers approached the Egyptians with cats in their arms. Fearing that the arrows would kill the cats, the Egyptians held their fire and went on to lose the battle. There are plenty of question marks over the validity of this story. It is, after all, a legend, but it would be a pretty cool image. Fast forward just over two and a half thousand years, and once again, cats are on the front line. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. Let me just start by saying that unlike Project Stargate, information on Project Acoustic Kitty is far less abundant, which is Probably why this video has been quite a lot of filler up to this point. You're welcome, audience. That probably has a lot to do with the length of this project and its degree of success, but information was released in 2001 thanks to a Freedom of Information request. The foundations for Project Acoustic Kitty really began with the work of Burhus Frederick Skinner. Burhus, that's a name and a half. An American psychologist who did some pioneering work on how to shape an animal's behavior through reinforcement in a controlled experiment. The Skinner Box, an experiment started in 1948, also known as an operant conditioning chamber, was where an animal could be rewarded or punished for certain behaviors. Probably its most famous case was that of rats, which were trained to press levers to receive food. Over time, Skinner found that by tailoring the reward system, he could elicit specific behavior from the animal. While these ideas were a hell of a long way from inserting listening devices into cats, most agree that the CIA took particular interest in Skinner's theories of just how far animals could be trained. Now, one thing that's far from an untested theory is the glory of today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark have a singular mission, a singular goal in their company life, and that is making sure your online experience is all nice and safe. Look, you're online right now, and the internet is a scary place. There's lots of people out there. There's companies that want to track you and advertise to you to an extent that it is fully creepy. There's, you know, your personal information that you use online is no one else's business but yours, and you can protect it with Surfshark. Surfshark also has HackLock, this searches database for your password, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's not. Surfshark are like, yo, your password's been leaked. Get that fixed, all right? All right? And maybe that shouldn't be your password, because it's alarmingly simple. And while you're in that warm comfort of safety where your passwords are fixed, maybe you're like, oh, I want to watch some Netflix, but you find out that the show you want to watch is not available in your region. You'll think, Simon, I live in America. I've got the greatest selection of Netflix everywhere, anywhere. And look, I'm not in America, but I was like, let's see what Surfshark's got. So I fired up Surfshark and I went onto Netflix America. And I was like, I want to watch Mission Impossible. Turns out Mission Impossible is available where I live, but not in America. So I, I don't understand that. I don't get it. But even if you are American, you can get the greatest Netflix selection in the world. Jump on over to some other countries and you'll find that the selection is entirely different, which is incredible. That is Surfshark's VPN technology. Also, Surfshark's totally unlimited, so you can watch as much as you want in 4K, whatever you like. Also, there's no, there's a money-back guarantee, there are no logs, it's fantastic. Also got great support. Right now, you guys can get 83% off and three months for free through the link in the description below. Or just use my code MEGA, because the deal is mega good. You'll be glad you did, and let's get back to cats.
In the mid-1960s, the CIA began researching whether similar methods could be used to train cats and dogs to do certain actions. In the early days, these were pretty basic actions, essentially just going to a certain area and returning. It seems as if quite early on, the decision was made to focus on cats rather than dogs, and it appears that this mainly came down to cost. A memo written in 1968 described how a modified Skinner box was used to train cats to search for a specific object using auditory signals. So one sound would mean go left, and one would mean go right, and another would mean just continue. As the cats improved, the size of the pen they were being trained in was gradually extended, and eventually, external sounds such as traffic noise was added in in an attempt to acclimatize the cats to the real world. Now, this all sounded great if you were training a cat to simply find a stuffed toy in a park, but in terms of espionage, it still had plenty of holes. After all, cats can't exactly report back to the human on what they've seen or heard while they were out in the real world. The CIA's response took Project Acoustic Kitty to an entirely different level. For the animal lovers out there, this is where things get a little squeamish, but you knew it was coming. The CIA decided to implant not only a listening device, but a power source, a transmitter, and an antenna inside the cat. No doubt it would have been fairly easy just to place all of that in a large collar, but they couldn't take the chance of it getting discovered. As you can probably imagine, this was far from straightforward. As any cat owner will tell you, their feline friends can be fussy little brats when they want to be, so the acoustic equipment needed to be completely undetectable to the cat. There was then the question of where to install it, and if this is starting to sound a little Frankensteinish, well, I'm afraid that's exactly where we're going. Oh, they're going to surgically implant it, aren't they? <laughs> CIA, why? Working with outside contractors, the CIA developed a 19mm transmitter along with an antenna that would reach from the cat's skull down its tail. In an ironic twist, the best place for the transmitter was to be found inside the cat's ear canal. The batteries were another serious hurdle because they needed to be small enough that the cat or anybody else couldn't detect them, but large enough to provide sufficient power to complete Felix's mission. Remember, this was the 1960s and most batteries looked like large lunchboxes. Once the CIA felt they had the right equipment and the right locations inside the cat, a series of tests were carried out on dummies, and with that out of the way, they turned their attention to living creatures. As I said earlier in this video, information on Project Acoustic Kitty is a little thin. We do know that at this point the CIA began inserting these listening devices inside the cats. How many cats were involved and how many have died in the process, we just don't know, but let's assume none, because that's the cheery thing, but it was probably many. <laughs> it appears as if the transmitter was implanted directly at the base of the skull, and the antenna, made of fine wire, was then woven through the cat's fur all the way to the tail. In 2001, an ex-CIA officer spoke to the Telegraph newspaper and summed up the process with a few blunt sentences. They slit the cat open, put batteries in him, wired him up. The tail was used as an antenna. They made a monstrosity. According to the heavily redacted report on the project, the first prototype was a grey and white female, although whether this was simply the first successful operation, we aren't sure. After the operation, which took one hour, the cat was placed in a recovery room. Apparently, she seemed to be okay, but when given some operational scenarios, her behavior became inconsistent, according to the report. Sadly, it doesn't elaborate any further. It seems as if the obstacles surrounding using cats really became clear at this point, and can be best summarized by this wonderfully worded segment from the report. The problem was that cats are not especially trainable. They don't have the same deep-seated desire to please a human master that dogs do. And the agency's RoboCat didn't seem terribly interested in national security. And it's at this point that we consider that the CIA has the word intelligence right in the middle of it. It does seem kind of unbelievable that this issue didn't come up earlier in the project. I mean, maybe it did and the agency was still hoping that something might come out of it. I mean, who knows, because it quickly became clear that if you let a cat out into the real world, it essentially just runs off looking for food. But all that being said, Project Acoustic Kitty did have one real-life mission. But before we get to it, let's just be clear on exactly what the CIA was hoping to do. Once the cat was released, a handler, probably waiting in a nearby van, would transmit specific tones directly to the cat, which in theory would guide it to its target. Once there, it would mill around lovingly, as cats do, with nobody the wiser that the microphone inside the cat was transmitting their every word back to the waiting van. Once the mission was completed, the cat would return to the van, hopefully to a tin of succulent tuna. And with that, the stage was set for one of the most extraordinary acts of espionage during the Cold War. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, we know fairly little about the first Acoustic Kitty mission. According to the report, the cat was tasked with eavesdropping on two people sitting on a park bench. Some say that these were two Soviet agents, but there's no confirmation of that. The cat was released from a van and began making its way across the road towards the park when, bang, it was hit by a taxi and kills. I mean, you really couldn't make this stuff up, could you? Apparently, agents quickly retrieved the body of the fallen agent to save any uncomfortable questions from being asked as to why the cat appeared to be half robots. <laughs> oh my. And that, I'm afraid, is that, in terms of the slightly surreal Project Acoustic Kitty. As far as we know, there were no further missions and the project was formally scrapped in 1967. <laughs> Glorious use of taxpayer money right there. The final report gave the frankly paltry commendation that the project showed that cats can indeed be trained to move short distances revolutionary. In total, Project Acoustic Kitty cost, wait for it, $20 million at the time, which, <laughs> rather unbelievably, $160 million today. And yes, those numbers will seem barely believable, but I mean, that is kind of right in with the story, isn't it? Project Acoustic Kitty must surely go down in history as one of the strangest attempts by either superpower to gain an advantage during the Cold War. But then again, I'm willing to bet that the projects we don't know about were even more outlandish. The 1960s was a truly bizarre period of time, and it doesn't get much stranger than robotic cat spies. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring it. Those legends, if you want to hear more about the CIA, by the way, and other newsworthy American schemes, make sure you check out my newest channel, Explored, which I will link to below. And thank you for watching.